Hallelujah. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Mm -hmm. We give God thanks for what he has done, allowing us to be able to pray. And not just to pray, but to pray strategic prayers. And that is what our focus is for today. And we just give God thanks for this focus. We know that praying is, you know, what God wants us to do perpetually. He says, pray without ceasing. And today we're going to have an interesting discussion on strategic prayer. And with me, I'm Verona Williams. And with me is Pastor Andrew Norman and Kimoy Callum. And we are going to just answer some questions, some pertinent questions that have come in, you know, for us to answer on strategic prayer. As our moderator had outlined, we have been on this focus for weeks now, and we want to just touch base with our young people. Some questions came in, and I'm telling you, you are going to be just so excited to hear the questions and the answers. So I'm going to jump right in. And Kimoy, I'm going to ask you, we have the topic strategic prayer. What is strategic prayer? Go ahead and tell us, Kimoy. What is strategic prayer, and why is it necessary? Go ahead. All right, so strategic prayer, I want to first define strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So a strategy is a, a plan of action, you know, and it's aimed towards a particular goal. And so with strategic prayer, no, it's not just you praying, it's not just you talking to God and telling him what you want right. to say, mm -hmm. but it's actually geared towards a specific, his intentions. And we know that God's will is, first of all, that men be saved. Right. And when they're saved, for them to remain in him. Mm -hmm. So strategic prayer basically covers, you know, for that. We pray the will of God. Right. And that's definitely, once we're praying the will of God, that is a strategic prayer. Because it's always towards men being saved. Mm -hmm. And for those who are saved, to abide in Christ. And, you know, Kimo, I, I enjoy the conversation we were having even before you know service you know today we were talking about the fact that there are two sets of people on this earth mm -hmm. the ones that are saved and the ones that are not there's no gray area there's no in between and so god's plan as you have said is that men be saved and those who are saved be kept saved that's right because that is what god wants for us to be saved and to be kept saved so pastor andrew um i want you to just our young people they, they want to see, they want a demonstration. I don't know, I'm putting you on the spot, Pastor. <laughs> All right, but before I do, Kimo, is there something else that you want to I feel that there's something else that you want to yes, add. Yes, actually. Mm -hmm. So why is it even important to pray strategically? Yes. You know, who wants to waste time praying a prayer that God will not hear? Mm -hmm. God will only answer <laughs> prayers that are according to his will. That's yes. the only thing that gets his attention. Mm -hmm and that he answers so that's why you should pray strategic prayers it's absolutely necessary right. but you know one key element inside of that is having the holy spirit mm -hmm. so we want to make that point off the bat it's very very essential that you have the holy spirit because right. he is the one who leads us to pray according to the will of god mm -hmm. so that we can have you know answers from god so right. don't waste time don't waste time and that was the message for and you need to go back and watch these messages we have parts one two and three out already this is part four in panel version panel discussion version and last week um darren callum spoke so ably about the will of god praying the will of god so you can go back and watch that and that is so on point Kimoy, your response right there so pastor andrew i'm putting you on the spot our young people they're hearing about strategic prayer but i'm gonna put you on the spot for two minutes pray a strategic prayer um and and let us see what it it sounds like what it is go ahead <laughs> well this is a prayer i actually use for years yes and um it's a prayer that I want to just let us hear. Um, it's from Psalm 90. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I was just praying this <laughs> over and over and over. And I'm seeing the fulfillment of that playing out in my life right now. Yes. It's a psalm in which I think Moses wrote the psalm. And mm -hmm. he was, um, if, I, if I remember right, and he was like, Lord, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom. So we're talking about not wasting time over yes. there in the new testament it says uh, you know don't don't be drunk with wine we're in his excess but be filled with the spirit mm -hmm. understanding what the will of the lord is mm -hmm. amen and so when we understand what the will of the lord is we we can pray strategically 
And uh, I used to just pray this prayer. It says Psalm 90 verse 14 to 17. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. Even before we need it, just set us up to receive yes, mercy. Yes. Keep us in a disposition where mercy is always our portion. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Mm. Who wants to live life without being it, being happy? You know, um, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Yes. We know that life also involves trials and afflictions. And the years wherein we have seen evil, let thy work appear unto thy servants. In other words, let us know what you're doing, God. And mm. let us engage you doing it with you. And thy glory unto their children. Let your work appear and let your glory appear to our children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Mm -hmm. And establish thou the works of our hands upon us. Yea. The works of our hands established thou it. To me, that's a strategic prayer. Wow. Because strategic prayer also, um, it goes before. It, it's almost like it's a preparation for what is coming up ahead. Mm -hmm. It's preemptive. Strategic prayers are preemptive. Yes. It, it prays the will of God before it is even needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. As my grandparents would say, pray and put on. The older yeah. people would say, you know, that means you store up oh my God. prayers. And it's also very current in the right. heat of battle, mm -hmm. in the heat of, um, you know, the enemy assailing us, in the heat mm -hmm. of a storm, you know, um, in the, the throes of a storm. Mm -hmm. we, we will get very focused in those times. And ask Jonah when he was in the belly of the whale. He wasn't mincing around. He was like, he didn't have <laughs> time to. Lord, deliver me from mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. And we know God brought him out of the belly of a whale. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, strategic prayer is both preemptive and very instant. It's, yes. it's it, you know, in the heat of it. We don't mince words. We're like, you know, a simple prayer like, help me, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Lord, help me, you know. Mm -hmm. Or just Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a strategic prayer. I really, really am yeah. so blessed by this. And I like how you marry the scripture with strategic prayer. In fact, that is praying the will of God, knowing what God is you know, expecting of us and praying the will of God. So that is quite in order. And my question to you, just to, to, tie, to tie into what you have just done, is strategic prayer learned? And, or is it um, something that we get in the new birth? the ability to do so so is it something that can be taught and we yeah. learn it or is it uh, it comes with the package of being born again well um the short answer to that is that um it's both yes. <laughs> that's a short answer mm -hmm. um but of course in the new birth um we are made one my spirit right. is made one with god's spirit mm -hmm. and so everything that god is feeling oh and, and sensing and wanting me to experience in that moment mm -hmm. is my reality yes and so um it's just a fellowship that's beyond words mm -hmm. you know it's an interaction it's uh it's you know one one prophetess one time on a vision of two balls of fire rolling together and rolling and then wow. clashing together and becoming mm -hmm. one big ball of fire mm -hmm. that's um pretty much a picture of what um, strategic prayer is yes. and what the new birth does to, to make us be able to pray, pray. to be one with God mm -hmm. yeah. so it's it, it's dynamic it's in motion it's, mm -hmm. li it's full of life it has energy it has impact fire I love impacts that. I love that <laughs> you know? I love that <laughs> yeah and it, it, it fire is not going to go unnoticed yes <laughs> you know it, it gets really some attention that. I really love yeah, that. Yeah, and um, it affects everything around it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it's, I think it's definitely, well, I know definitely the new birth, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it does mean just because you have the new birth that it, everything is going to go according to your will. The day right. I got saved, I wanted to go to heaven the same moment. Mm -hmm. But that was the will of the Father. He subjected me to this, um, this vanity of this flesh or of this body that is able to, that is corruptible or can die he left me in this body so that i can be a witness to him on mm -hmm. earth 
and to save some of my relatives, etc., etc. Yes. So, um, yes, new birth is definitely um, catapults us into God's space, as I heard somebody pray earlier. And, um, but also, it is we learn, just like right. the scripture says, Jesus learned obedience, obedience by the things, by the he things which he suffered. Mm-hmm. So, there's a learning and an increasing of the measure. Mm-hmm that God can trust us with in prayer. Yes, I, I love that answer. I really do. And so the, the, re, the, the, the born again experience is, is strategic mm-hmm. to us being able to pray strategic prayers, yes. right? Amen. Because that, that is, we definitely can't do it without the spirit, the power of the spirit of right. God. Mm-hmm. And um, there is a, there is a um, scripture. We always, this scripture, Psalm 66 verse 18, and I would love for it to be projected because it's a scripture that gives us um, the guideline as it relates to prayer and, uh, you know, what inhibits prayer, what prevents us from praying, iniquity. And I want Kimar to speak on that wise because the scripture does say, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your take on that scripture, Kimar? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And that's Psalm 66 verse 18. All right, so this is Youth Sunday. Some people might say, wow, what is iniquity? You know, what's that? And it's based, <laughs> some people may define it as, you know, the hidden sin of the heart. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've seen it a different way where once we're embracing sin, we're holding on to that, those sinful ways inside of our hearts. That's iniquity, and that's why God will not hear us because yes. sin blocks us from having mm-hmm. a fellowship with him. And so that's why I know when the unsaved decides to say, I'm done with sin, I'm a want God. Yes. That means that they're not holding on to the sin in the heart anymore. They want to be saved. And so God hears that prayer. Right. That's a strategic prayer right there. God save my soul. Mm-hmm. He hears that. Yes, yes. Yes. So that's what it really means. If you regard, if you're holding on to sin in your heart, mm-hmm. you cannot talk to God you and can't. have that free flow of fellowship, mm-hmm. continuous fellowship with him as you really so so you're saying if 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 i'm in sin that is definitely a blocker i I have a follow-up question for you that came in what is consecration then Mm -hmm. and why is it important in strategic prayer and uh, um pastor andrew you can chime in after she responds so again what is consecration and why is it important in strategic prayer i know for a ministry we're focused now on sanctification and the consecration mm-hmm. and those are two words that we don't want to mix up but i want you to respond to that what is consecration and why is it important to strategic prayer Go ahead. all right consecration is basically being set apart mm-hmm. you know being you know separated unto god to do right. his work and his work alone do mm-hmm. his pleasure alone so that's what scientific sorry consecration is. okay so since you, that's not a slip of the tongue right <laughs> so what what is let's jump there then and then you go back to this question what's the difference between sanctification and then i'll just um tag pastor andrew on that one then go back to you what's the difference between sanctification and consecration and then you can pick up on that can okay. so pastor andrew first and then you. all right so sanctification is where we are set apart mm-hmm. um, the bible says that john the baptist at his birth they knew what the will of God was for his life. Right. And I pray that every one of you who have children, that the will of God will be revealed to you concerning right. your children so you can pray strategically for them. Mm-hmm. And so the parents didn't leave him um, to, to, as we say, mix with the priest in Jerusalem. Right. They, they took him um, into the wilderness among the, 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 those persons who were out there, there were uh, two groups of persons out there, um, if you read historically, uh, who were setting themselves apart for, mm-hmm. who had set themselves apart to sanctify themselves, to sanctify themselves, to say, we want a priesthood. Yes. We want a, 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 to be able to pray prayers according to the Lord God, because so many other priests had become mm-hmm. corrupted, had become politicized. Okay. Okay. It was all about yes. politics and mm-hmm. politics and all of the money making <laughs> kind of thing. Yes. And so the Bible said he was kept in the desert until the day of his showing, John mm-hmm. the Baptist. Okay. He was kept in the desert um, and, and he was there with those persons, raising him, training him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's being sanctified, set apart. Then right. there came a point 
where he took up the mantle of the call on his life, where he had matured sufficiently, okay. and now he, he became consecrated. He was consecrated okay. to the call, okay. to the purpose of God. So mm. when he embraced it, that's when that speaks of the consecration to, as the songwriter says, consecrate me now to, to thy service, service, Lord. Lord. Right. So consecration is always to a function, to a role, mm -hmm. to a specific um, office or yeah, let's stay, let's stay right there to mm -hmm. an office. Right. So that's what consecration is. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> sanctification, consecration. So we don't want Set to apart, mix up. Yeah, right. we don't want Set to mix up Set apart for those. training. Yeah. Right. We don't want to mix up those two terms, right? Mm -hmm. So in light of that, Kimoi, yes. why is it important in strategic prayer to be consecrated? Definitely, we have to be sanctified. You said it earlier when you alluded to, when you mentioned what um, the Psalm 66 verse 18 meant, yes. right? Or what it means. So why 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 is it important um in strategic, strategic um, prayer. prayer to be consecrated go ahead all right so inside of consecration there is fellowship with god right mm -hmm. so we, we become you know sensitive to his mind and his heart you know what right. he desires for our lives and for situations around us and for other people's lives as well mm -hmm. so when we are totally sold out or dedicated unto God as yes. we are offering prayers it will be according to his will mm -hmm. we can do just as Jesus did you know in the sense of saying okay I only do what I see my the father doing do. because you have right. that fellowship <laughs> yeah. consecration instead of consecration you have to walk in the spirit you have right. to abide or, or to dwell in the Holy Spirit so again mm -hmm. we we'll go back to the fact that you have to be saved mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to have the Holy Spirit inside of you Right. And you also have to maintain that fellowship. Right. Maintaining that fellowship, you know, we'll see the consecration, you know, being continued so that you can pray the will of God. Right. That's the only way you can do that. So maintaining the fellowship, because we're talking to teenagers, and, and I just want to mention that I got saved at 15 years old, wow. right? <laughs> awesome. uh, not just teenagers, of course, but if teenagers can understand what you're saying, then more than likely adults yeah, also right. can. Yeah. Um, right, so consecration to maintain that um, so what are we saying for example uh, right here on the set um, a husband told me that he met his wife as a dancer <laughs> lately <laughs> recently that is Kimoy right um, her, her husband Darian said she, he met her as a, as a minister of dance practically speaking he had never seen her dance before oh my God. like that you know and he knew about it that she used to be involved but you know to see her actually ministering in the dance mm -hmm. you know um so mm -hmm. that is she's seeing the ministry of dance and understanding mm -hmm. that and feeling in her heart knowing in her heart that this is some yes, area this is yes. an area that i can be consecrated to mm -hmm. the lord in for the lord to work through me and and yes. um you know i did a uh, an academy, a little wonder academy, my <laughs> wife and I one time years ago, you know, yeah, to try and to move into the ministry of dance a little bit. And uh, <laughs> I, was at that, I, I was at that production. <laughs> and um, while I, they, they, there's a point in it where they said, okay, we're all going to go freestyle now. And would you believe it? It's like the Holy Spirit fell on me and he was oh. like showing me what to do. I'm like, Lord, oh I'm not God. a that's dancer. Really, yeah, that's <laughs> really, that's really yeah, he was like yeah. wanted to show he was showing me the moves and I'm like, but Lord, I'm not yes. I'm not like a real dancer. Yes, <laughs> yes, know? yes, yes. You know, so the Lord will help us yes. in the area that we are serving. Yes. You know. So yeah. if you are ministering in the song, right. in the dance, yeah, dance, if you are helping maybe. to clean the church, whatever yeah. area. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Right. And so, um, yes, that, that consecrated to the service of the mm. Lord. And I mean, officially, there are persons that can be ordained in an actual ordination service to a yes. specific area. But all of us are called to the ministry of reconciliation, reconciliation to, right. to help other persons connect with God and also to continue um, in being encouraged in mm -hmm. serving God. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Um, I want to add another question to, you know, to your platter, Pastor Andrew. And it's an interesting one. Listen to this. Um, a bit lengthy, but I'm going to read it. I have been praying very passionately about specific things in my life, but I'm not getting a response from God. How do I get God to respond to my prayers? You heard that? I heard it. Okay, I heard go it. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And God loves when you be specific. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Jesus said, don't be like the heathen that just rant and rant and run all over the place with religious talk. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, that's not what God is, you know, one man went to the temple and he didn't have a long prayer. He was like, Lord, he was beating his chest. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. sinner right. mm -hmm. And another man was like, look at this guy, you know, like, Lord, I'm glad that I fast two days a week. And he was praising himself and all yes. of that stuff. And at the end of it, Jesus said, which one of them you feel went home more justified before mm -hmm. the Lord? Um, feeling more justified. It was the one who was real with God. Yes. It wasn't a long prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, being specific is important. Um, and, you know, I believe when you're specific and God is able to tell you yes, He's able to tell you wait, He's able to say no. No. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, it's just as simple as that. It may not go the way you want, right. how you want, when you want. But um, if you're bold enough to be specific with God, God will be specific with, with you. You. Mm -hmm. you know, and the worst thing that can happen is that he'll tell you, you know, that's not, <laughs> that's not that's how not it goes. That's yes. not my will for your life. Mm -hmm. But he'll, he'll respond. Yes. That's for sure. He'll respond. And we have to be humble enough to you know settle with what god says yeah. so we don't fight against the will of god if he says this let's humble ourselves and say okay lord it's easier that way because we don't want any receipts right mm -hmm. <laughs> all right um Kimo, i have a question for you how do i know when god is speaking and how do i know that god truly hears me mm -hmm. it's a two-way thing how do i know god is speaking and how do i know that he truly hears me when i talk to him Right, so mm -hmm. one thing about God is the master communicator. Yes, he is. You know, he's the one who made us to speak to each other. So, you know, how much more can he speak to us? Right. You know, so he definitely speaks. I just want somebody to hear that mm -hmm. today. That's God speaks. He does. Right? But Jesus said, my sheep hear Amen. my voice. Amen. Again, so the sheep are the people of God, the children of God, are the sons of God, those mm -hmm. who have the Holy Spirit. You hear me say it again? You need the Holy Spirit. So in having Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit, you can perceive yes. the voice of God because he can mm -hmm. speak in so many different ways. Yes. Through the Bible, through someone else, through a sign outside, mm -hmm. something. But you will know without a shadow of a doubt, as you're inside of that fellowship with him, yes. you will be able to perceive his voice. Mm -hmm. So that's how you hear God. Yeah. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other part now, remind me of that please. Auntie. So how do I know that he hears me? Okay. Right. The scripture says that if we're praying according to his will, yes. he hears us. Mm -hmm. And if he hears us, like he will that. answer. Mm -hmm. So you know it flows. Once we are praying his will, yes. he will certainly mm -hmm. hear our prayers yes. and answer. And we will receive the answer right. because we are in tune with him. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I love the word of God. and I really love the word of God and how we're using the scriptures to really be the foundation of our answers here this, this morning. And I would love for the, I don't know if we can project that scripture. The, one, the first one you mentioned, Kimai, mm -hmm. um, my sheep hears my voice. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Pastor, do you want to, to, to um, chime in on that? Because my sheep, that's mm -hmm. an easy answer to this question. Mm -hmm. right. My sheep hear my voice. So do the math. You're not a sheep. <laughs> you may not be able to hear him so, so clearly. But right. he says, my sheep hears my voice, right. knows it, and they'll follow no other. Right. You know, so and, chime and in sheep, on that. Sheep speaks to, um, well, if we want to be real adult sheep, mm -hmm. but lambs, which if we we're speaking to young people today, they would be considered lambs. <laughs> Yes. And the lambs, um, a shepherd having sheep and young sheep with, with him, the, the younger sheep, mm -hmm. sometimes they are playing, they are running all over the place and yes. enjoying life and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and so on. And they, they sometimes might miss the voice of the shepherd. But you know what? The, the baby sheep follow the bigger sheep. <laughs> yes. Yes. The lambs follow the bigger sheep because mm. the, 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 la the, sh the older sheep are usually more attuned. Mm -hmm. more more um, keen on True. on the hearing the voice of the shepherd yes and so um the, that's what you do as a young lamb as a young person in god follow the persons who yes. you who, who already have, have learned the voice of god you know it took a while for abraham to clearly discern yes. the voice of god um mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the, the intricacies of his, you know, why, why God do I have to be waiting for 25 years to have this child mm. kind of thing. So sometimes there's a waiting and so on um, involved inside of it. But my sheep definitely hears my voice. That's just normal that sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. Um, so yes, that, that's a powerful verse right there. Um, that's Jesus speaking that his sheep hears his voice. And he speaks and um, you know we limit communication to words a lot but that's not real mm. you know my father didn't always say a lot yes. <laughs> sometimes he just looked yes and that was sufficient I'm seeing him looking and I understand what that look means yes. <laughs> you know body language yes. um, you know different things that we can do the sheep shepherd may clap his hands and yes. the sheep knows what that means <laughs> You know, and so on. So there are different noises that the shepherd makes to communicate to the sheep. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 That reminds me of a scripture, you know, inside of Psalms 32, mm -hmm. where the Lord says, I will guide you with my eyes. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. You yes. know, something like that. Just his eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have to know someone well to know what, you know, the look means. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be intimate with them in order to, you know, follow through whatever way they may communicate with you. Because as Pastor Andrew said, it's beyond words. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, yes. it's beyond words. And um, in Romans 2 also, it talks about God accusing and excusing, excusing different right. thoughts. Yes. Even your very thought, even if you think to pray a certain way that, especially for those of us who have the Spirit of God living in us, mm -hmm. if you even, if a thought comes to you, and even if it's not you, think the thought, because sometimes you can even yes, feel yes. Um, emotions coming from mm -hmm. other people. You can feel a vibe coming from yes. other people. And that vibe, the Spirit of God, is very attuned to every emotion, mm -hmm. every imagination, everything that comes to one of his children mm -hmm. and um, you may not even have embraced it yet but it's just there floating around you know trying to, to land on you trying to settle in your heart and the Spirit of the Lord will say mm -mm, don't go there <laughs> you know the Spirit of the Lord will will um, will will let us know he'll accuse the thought let you know uh-uh mm -hmm. don't don't even mm -hmm. think that or he will excuse it he will say okay that's fine you know Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so Pastor Andrew, I have another question for you. It says, since God is omniscient, I like this question. Since God is omniscient, he knows everything, right? That's the meaning of omniscience, right? Right. And, how, and, and has an infallible plan for all things and knows the outcome of all things. So why do I need to pray? Okay, <laughs> infallible means it's, it cannot fail, right? right. That, that mm -hmm. a, that's a plan that cannot fail. Yeah, right. And that's very encouraging. That's the thing that shocked me as a teenager when I heard those people in that little church mm -hmm. say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And they were so at peace. Their peace amazed me. I'm mm -hmm. like, do they listen to the news? Mm -hmm. Do they hear what's going on in this world? Yes. <laughs> you know, but... um. To, to, to respond directly to your question mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your question is is remind me remind me it please. is infallible right he's omniscient, right so why do we need sovereign. to pray why do why we need, do to, need pray? to pray right so I need to pray because I need to get on the same frequency with God uh, right oh I need God. to get on the same frequency with God I mm -hmm. need to I need to move with his passion so inside of his passion so that i can respond to my yes. situation mm -hmm. my circumstance my relationship mm -hmm. the, the the impending um things that are coming that seem to be coming in the future right i can respond to them the same way that he responds to them because like you said he's omniscient mm -hmm. he's never dis he's never disturbed as in like nervous you know he's, ne he's never anxious yes he's never um move on haste yeah. he, he just moves inside of his will his sovereignty. and yeah. and um and so i need to pray because i need to i need to feel his passion in the moment mm -hmm. hallelujah i need to feel his heart towards people True. and i need to be able to to impress upon him on heaven mm -hmm. the 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 the, the, um, the need to respond 
inside of the instance that it wants to respond. Yes. You know, there are times when, when God wanted to do some stuff. And like, for example, Jesus said, I must needs be go through Samaria. Right. Because he discerned that it was the will of God for him mm -hmm. to go through Samaria, which was a route that Jews didn't take. But he needed to meet a woman at the well. My God. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we don't have time to go into that. But I'm just saying, definitely we need to pray. <laughs> Yeah, that's a need, need, need right? Need. And it's it's a sign. It's a great sign of humility. Mm -hmm. And real, when we are really praying, yes, heaven stands on tiptoes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there is a particular purpose that God has. Per There's a particular plan that God has for today in your life. There's some people yeah. He wants you to meet today. There are situations that you're going to encounter today. Mm. And you need to be prepared to, to, to deal with those experiences. And to, they have been traveling on buses before and I could just sense danger. Uh, the Lord al alerted me to the fact that there's some danger up ahead and I started praying. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to avert, you know, the wow. accident That's and amazing. so on. Right. So, so we, need we need to pray. To pray. With yes. all the ease in between, we <laughs> yeah. need to pray. And it's yeah. almost like... Um, I heard, I, I, I'll just paraphrase, I, I heard in a conversation somebody was saying, you know, God, why does God, in, even inside of worship, why do we need to worship God? And the same, just piggybacking on what you're saying, very proud, the same as worship. Person saying, why do we need to worship God? I mean, God, does he not know who he is? We we'll keep saying that, Lord, you are, Lord, you are. And I'm like, listen to me, worship and prayer, they are there for us. It calls us to him. ascend, yes. Right. It calls us to, to so rise. God is not there scratching his head. Who am I again? Tell me, come on, Pastor Andrew, tell me who am I? So, <laughs> Lord, you're sovereign. Okay, tell me who am I again? Lord, you're strong. No. Right. Worship is for us. So, I so, mean. so simply mm -hmm. put, God has the plan, you do not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do the you math, not. yes. God yes. has the plan, you don't have it. Right. Um, Kimo, you want to chime in? Yeah, man. So we have to remember that strategic prayer, you know, is basically it's us praying the will of God. Yes. yes. But how will we know if we don't talk to Him? Exactly. Right. So we exactly. must pray. Yes. Strategic prayer is yes. God's plan like or like God's that. strategy for mm -hmm. us, you know, inside of partnering with Whoa. Him in the Whoa. earth. Whoa. So how can you partner mm -hmm. with somebody if you don't know what them up to? Yes. You have to. So so yeah. so so <laughs> what I'm hearing Kimoy is saying is, is that strategic prayer unveils. Yes. The plan of God. To us. <laughs> so we can yes. do it. Hey. Come on, let's put right. our hands together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, Woo. because God, God don't have Alzheimer's and he don't have lost of memory. He knows his plan. But Whoa. we don't. So when Amen. we pray, I love that, Kimai. Yeah. When we pray, we are, you know, getting into that, that same mindset. Lord, this is your will. And he opens up so much to us when we're praying. Wow. I, I just love Amen. this. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I have another question for you, Kimai. Yes. It says here, another um, lengthy one, but we allow our youths to write and we, we know we, we patiently answer. It says, in corporate settings, mm -hmm. I remember this when I was young, in corporate settings, when everyone is praying, for, um, for me, when everyone is praying, for me, pray, prayer seems confusing, seems like a daunting task, mm -hmm. and I can't pray as long and loud and passionate as, as others. I'm sometimes lost for words, and I don't know what to pray, and I don't know what I should be, um, who I should be praying for. It goes on and on, but in essence, can you just answer that question? All right, so first of all, I want to say, don't compare yourself with others. Yes. What God is really looking for is a sincere heart. Mm -hmm and a pure heart and true. you will hear we said it true, earlier true, that true. Your, your prayer can be one sentence mm -hmm. and it's effective it's still a tr strategic prayer yeah, right. you know so don't look at the length or you know the volume you know how mm -hmm. loud or, or the words you know, other it's people not pray. about that that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the prayer that god yes. hears and on the matter of not knowing what to pray i want to highlight a scripture it's romans 8 verse 26 can you bring that up please Right, it says, Likewise, the spirit mm -hmm. also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray yes. for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, 
the Lord will help you. Yes. By his Holy Spirit in you, he will lead you as to what mm. to pray. And as we were saying earlier, it's something that is developed. Yes. So the more you, you know, you go to God and you start to communicate with him, his mm. spirit, as you're in the word, I it will be that. inspiring your prayers. Mm. You know, it's, it's not hard. Mm. It's not hard. It's not you hard. just need to start. Open up the word, read the word, and when you see what's written in the scriptures, begin to pray back mm-hmm. to God. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that, and that will develop, you know, your muscles. Yeah, you can consider strategic prayer like a muscle. muscle. Yeah, so the more you work, the muscles, the stronger that you nice. get. Wow. Your confidence is built up because you know that this is what God says. Mm-hmm. You know, your fellowship is just growing with Him, and so your prayers, your strategic prayers will get sharper yes. and sharper. I love that scripture. Can you bring that up again? I really love it. I think we need to really read it. You know, what, where is it from again, Kemai? And can you read Romans it? 8 26. Ooh. Likewise, I'm going to read it again. Yes, read it again. Yes, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm-hmm. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us mm-hmm. with groanings which cannot be uttered. Shall I talk about that last part as well? sister, go ahead. (laughs) As Pastor Andrew said earlier, you know, sometimes it's beyond words. You know, it's a real thing. I've had that experience in the past where Mm -hmm. I go to pray and I only find myself the tears and the groanings, literally. That's all that could come. And when I saw the scriptures, like, you know, it was a light bulb moment for me, like, Mm -hmm. oh, that was the whole, that was actually prayer. Wow. You know, it's beyond words. God knows what's in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And as I said, once we just present ourselves sincerely right. unto Him, mm-hmm. and the Spirit will lead us as to how to pray. Because you know, sometimes we don't use you know intelligible words in the sense mm-hmm. of you know mm-hmm. words that we know English language or whatever language you speak. Sometimes right. it's another language that the Holy Spirit is to pray in. Yes. So you know, it's really dynamic. Strategic prayer is mm-hmm. dynamic. I-, I want our young people to really be you know zooming into these responses. Because guess what? You may not you may hear somebody, you may be in a prayer setting yes. and somebody prays before you and oh my god, they can pray. We mm-hmm. say, Boy I'm can pray, man. And the words mm-hmm. and the length of the prayer and they go up and they just know, it it just sounds like, Oh my god, how am I gonna pray after and then your your time comes to pray and the person says, Okay, Pastor Andrew says to you, Okay, John you, your time to pray. Guess <laughs> yeah. what? You get intimidated. Yeah. Never let that happen to you because prayer is talking to God based on where you are. You talk to Him. Just talk to Him. You don't have to have those big words and right. you don't. You just be yourself before the Lord because that person can't condemn that person because they are being themselves before the Lord. Just want it, just ensuring that that is authentic. Mm-hmm. But if they are praying loud and using different words and terms and so on, fine. That's them and God. What about you and God? Don't be intimidated. Right. Come before him, be real and sincere. Right. Pastor Andrew, you wanted to chime in on that? Right. The corporate setting prayer, is, is that's a huge um, thing because mm-hmm. a lot of times in the Western world, we have lost that, that art, that yes. science, that wisdom true, of true, corporate true. prayer. Mm-hmm. And everybody has this individualism kind of mindset, this mm-hmm. worldview that I'm this great individual. Mm-hmm. But there's a body that Jesus has birthed in the earth, the body of yes. Christ. Yes. And a body yes. is yes. not just one member out there on a limb somewhere trying mm-hmm. to be a superhero mm-hmm. or a super mm-hmm. strategic prayer person by themselves alone. Yes. Yes. Even though God That's does true. respect individual prayer, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but um, when we talk about the corporate mm-hmm. setting and young people fitting inside of that setting, we've got to learn to be comfortable in our own skin. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have to learn that different persons are, are trusted with different um, levels of, of intercession, intercession right. and with different um, measures. Mm-hmm. And they are tackling different demons. Come on, somebody. They are tackling different mindsets. There are, there are certain things that God trusts, um, certain challenges and, and situations and battles that God would allow someone who has mm-hmm. been seasoned in God for a while to fight. Mm-hmm. That he's not going to allow you to fight. That's true. So thank God that this person is fighting them bigger devils so you mm-hmm. can fight your little devils. Yes. You know, yes, but yes. Um, certainly um, corporate prayer is huge. Um, leadership here is very important in corporate prayer. True. We pray for our leadership, and that's something I learned growing up. Pray for the preacher, pray mm-hmm. for our leaders, so that they can cast that vision. Because yes. if we're talking corporate prayer, 
the vision of the house is going to be very important to be clearly I articulated like I really like and to be clearly um, presented like mm -hmm. you know the church there's a church in a, in a place called Pensacola in Florida mm -hmm. the pastor wanted a little bit more of, of what of God that he was experiencing he was like no God I'm just experiencing mm -hmm. rain drops like a little dripping of you know when we need rain we need rain wow. And he's like, oh, we're only getting a few drops. I was at a funeral in Portmore and uh, we just experienced a few sprinkles of rain. It wasn't like we need some heavy rain. And mm -hmm. so they started praying for revival, revival fires, revival rain to mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And every Sunday night, the church was involved in that. So that's very focused. That's very strategic. Yes, right. We are praying for revival and they would have the flags of different countries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God has made I this like church that. a house of prayer. Mm -hmm unto all nations, nations yes. and that's what God raised up Israel to be in the past the nation of Israel to be an, a, a, a blessing to all nations God said to Abraham I'm gonna bless you and make you a blessing to all nations right. and through your seed I'm gonna bless all nations also so I'm getting excited here but yes. of course corporate <laughs> yeah. prayer when we understand that together prayer the bible said church was prayer was made without ceasing by mm -hmm. the church for peter mm -hmm. as herod tried to kill him too as he had just killed one of the apostles and he said i'm going to kill peter in the morning too to please the jews mm -hmm. and but prayer was made without ceasing yes. you know and in a setting like that you may not know how to pray like somebody else but you are praying lord save peter deliver him out of prison yes. maybe that's all you know what to say somebody else is dealing with some other stuff but God heard that prayer and an angel came and loosed Peter from prison. Mm -hmm. Corporate prayer is powerful. Praying together it's around powerful. one specific it's thing powerful. is important. Yes. Revival came mm -hmm. to Pensacola mm -hmm. and when it hit that Father's Day Sunday 1985, I'm telling you, people were supposed to leave church by about 1 o'clock. I think by 3.34, people were still in the car park, falling out in the car park. Mm -hmm. I mean, people couldn't drive home. It was crazy. And then people started to come from all over the world for, for, for to, to that church for years. That, we yes. went there like three years later. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a baptism. One of the nights, we went two nights. The Friday night was baptism. Mm -hmm. And they had, they said they had just baptized the, the millionth person wow. after three years. You know, people, were, they oh didn't God. use any ad. They didn't know, do none of that the stuff. Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit just started. Thing. <laughs> drawing people from yes. people were there from Japan, people were there from all over the world, yes. and we were there from Jamaica. I said, Have you guys ever heard about Jamaica? <laughs> of course, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed by this because the Holy Spirit markets his own thing, he doesn't Amen. need Amen. doesn't need our marketing strategies and right. so on, mm -hmm. uses them. But I mean, he does his own thing, and that's the same thing that you were making reference to. I want to ask you a question though, inside of corporate prayer, right? Yes. Um there is sometimes we're praying this question just you know it dropped on me right sometimes we're praying in corporate prayer and uh, say you and Kimo you're praying together um you're told to pray together i've seen it happen a lot of times how important is it for you say you're asked to pray together you're praying together both of you simultaneously praying that's fine but how important is it for us to in corporate settings listen to each person's pray it's, okay. we call it touch and agree i don't know okay. you, you can you can um also respond to that yes there is there are times when you know uh like you see in the psalm they were singing and worshiping and then there you see that word sila it's okay. when all the musicians and everybody just go like god you're here wow. and lord don't leave me i'm not <laughs> letting you leave here without blessing me yes. <laughs> you know everybody yes. there's that time when everybody's just Released to some people are running, some people are rolling on the ground. Yes. Other people may just be quietly, just you know, but everybody is reaching out to the Lord mm -hmm. in that moment. The, the instruments are going and so on. But of course, in there is a point though where there will be that holy hush mm -hmm. where, where the spirit of somebody will start praying maybe louder than everybody else. Got the spirit of God come upon that person, and you know that God's ready to speak to the entire congregation. Yes. And then the Bible teaches us that when you see somebody rise up and start speaking in tongues like that, then you know you need to pray mm -hmm. that that God brings interpretation so the whole assembly can be blessed together. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like you experiencing the glory of God in a in a group with a group of personal with somebody else. So yes. it's important. And yes, uh, there's a point when that holy hush comes where God begins to 
it, it is a corporate thing it's a corporate move of the spirit mm -hmm. the spirit of prophecy is there or whatever and God know that that to heal a praise is being released mm -hmm. that worship is there and there are times when even praying together with an individual it, the Lord will just touch you on the shoulder and say alright let this person pray for you now and probably in their prayer you'll begin to see how the Lord just speaks yes. to your very the very core of your being just mm -hmm. blesses yes. your socks off yes. as that person pray for you and then you know you also trusting the Lord to begin to pray for that person and mm -hmm. that person just just listening and just drinking in in that moment because in that corporate worship in that to heal a praise mm -hmm. in that spirit of prophecy being released uh, you will operate at a measure at a level of anointing that is not where you are personally yes because that corporate praise will take you in a realm beyond where you personally can operate by yourself yes. because now you're in that corporate setting feeding off of that anointing that wave that of that anointing that is released in that house right. in that moment and so um it, you know you you'll see your, you'll find yourself soaring in in realms of the spirit that you would never soar in before on your own in that corporate setting so um that's where the wisdom comes in now where the bible says don't think more highly of, of yourself, yourself than you ought, ought right. because even though you went there in the spirit in that corporate sin and the bible said saul started to prophesy mm -hmm. when he went among the prophets and everybody was saying wait is saul a prophet mm -hmm. now no he wasn't a prophet but that prophetic um anointing that that spirit of prophecy that was released mm -hmm. um caused him to begin to prophesy and so, um, you know, don't be deceived just because the Lord uses you in a corporate setting to, to prophesy or to do stuff or mm -hmm. to, to, to break through in the realm of the spirit in a dimension that you're not used to yourself alone. Um, that is just that body life causing you to rise up and stand up on somebody's shoulder in the spirit. And that wave of anointing lifting you beyond even where you personally are in your personal walk. Amen. I think amen. it's so yeah, amen. I think it's so important for us to be patient inside yes. of corporate um prayer times of corporate prayer because sometimes you know you will we are sons of God, we're in him, we're one, we're in one space, we're in him, right? So if, if there's a time when we're praying corporately, God will have all the voices praying yes, together. Yes. And it's, 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 it it's sounds so lovely. Even when wow. we're on Zoom sometimes and yes. we say, unmute, and it sounds, you know, the, the timing for our prayer, vo, vo, the voices are staggered and so on. It still is lovely. But there are times when we are to stop and listen to somebody else praying yes. and agree yes. in a corporate setting. And I don't think um, sometimes we're sensitive to that. Right. Where okay, three of us are here and we're praying. Our voices are simultaneously going up to the Lord. That's fine. But if one person is is we we can sense when one person is asked to pray, you stop. Um, Pastor Andrew and myself, we're listening to Kimoy praying. We're listening to where she, you know where she's going in the prayer, and we're agreeing. I think we have to be sensitive to that, right. and that calls upon patience and love. Right. Not wanting her to hush so I can pray, so you can hear how good me can pray, right? No. <laughs> or how Pastor Andrew Compe can pray. But let us pray and right. listen. And sometimes when you are praying, you can hear where people's spiritual location, um, where they where they are spiritually. Right. You understand? You know, okay, she's praying like this. I'm listening. You can't pray over her to hear her. Right. You pray, you listen, and you know where to guide her after. And in those moments, um, young people... Um, they say young people are moody, but could it be that that is something that God has gifted young people with to be able to pick up on moods mm -hmm. and they pick up on the mood of the spirit? What, you know, if we really believe that the spirit of the Positive Lord in a, corporate, <laughs> yeah, in a corporate setting is, yes. is take, can take somebody someplace in the spirit where they are not personally in their personal walk yes. and bless a congregation. Mm -hmm. I mean, how could God use a 17 year old boy to deliver a whole nation of Israel, David? killed Goliath and and there was military deliverance of an entire nation mm. come on somebody God can use young people God can use young people to do awesome things for the kingdom of God right. amen and so I want us to understand that listen just like God spoke to to Samuel as a, he, he probably was definitely under six under 10 years old he was mm -hmm. a, a little baby boy when God spoke to him, I, I was listening to a prophet yesterday. He said Jesus appeared to him at six years old. 
Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. There are children that God is going to raise up in Amen. the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. That is going to, and, and our children, we want our children to be better than us. We want them to go further than us in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But we are here to guide them with wisdom. Yes. We're here to guide you. So even though you're being stirred up and, and the spirit of prophecy, I was in a, in a, in a, um, in a, in a setting at Woolman's Girls School uh, recently where I knew that the spirit of prophecy was now being released. There was a, a preaching anointing release in that place. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of prophecy was, was being stirred up where people would begin to start prophesying. Even person with the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And then those also who would also be prophets were, were in that place. Yes. And, and so, but when that starts to happen, we don't need to go off somewhere. Young persons, don't go off somewhere just because you're gifted. And God started to stir up a gift inside of you. That's the time when you need to stay aligned to an Elijah. Mm -hmm. Elisha, that's when you need to stay aligned so that you can be established. Your works can be established. You can be anchored in God. And you don't just go off into the deep end somewhere and, and fall into all kinds of pitfalls in yes. ministry. Mm -hmm. that, that these persons who, who, who are around you uh, and know already some of them probably fell in some of those pitfalls and know how to help you to avoid falling in those pitfalls mm -hmm. so um zeal is something that young people are are, 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 are good at you know we, that's something young people have passion you know that's something that that jesus is excited about jesus was very passionate yeah. he said listen young people and children remind me of where i'm coming from because god is very focused strategic prayer is a very focused pointed prayer all the light in this room if it may if it got to a pinhead kind of light it would pierce through steel yes i'm telling you there's something about focus that god does with young people and particularly with boys mm -hmm. come on young mm -hmm. men come on young men you know they say that we're not good at doing multiple things mm -hmm. that's why we make such progress in the realm of the spirit and so <laughs> we need to surround our young people surround our young people when they are pushing in god when they are on fire for God and guide them so that they'll be those arrows. You know, mm. yes, come on, our children yeah, are arrows. God. Come yeah, on, yeah. somebody. Yeah, and mm. we're going to make sure you hit the target and keep on hitting the target. Amen. And you, you, pray, in, you pray with zeal and in wisdom. And passion, yes. Zeal and in wisdom. And you follow the navigation of the Spirit. Right. I feel, um, Kim, I want to <laughs> chime in. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I've been burning over here because there's so much we could say as it pertains to corporate prayer, you yes. know. Um, I'm hearing you guys speak, I'm, I'm thinking of this, that corporate prayer edifies us. Yes. You wow. know, it's one way also for us to bear each other's burdens. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's just the heart of God that His children come together and intercede. Yes, you know, there's a scripture I want us to look at. It's inside of First Peter two and verse five. Mm -hmm. It says, "Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house mm -hmm. and holy priesthood yes. to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ." Mm -hmm. So that's what we do as sons of God. We are part of a priesthood, a royal priesthood, as the scripture puts it. You know, Jesus was the first, and then we, you know, hey. as we are born again, we yes. join that priesthood. Yes. So Woo. we have to come yes. together and pray. Wow. And it's another element as well of corporate prayer where mm -hmm. we become vulnerable to each other. Yes. And we're yes. able to operate and feel God's love for each yes. other. Yes. You know, that's just something yes. beautiful. Yes. And yes. James 5, mm -hmm. I think it's verse 16. I or love 18. the scriptures. I'm, gonna, yes. I'm going for it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can you confess your faults one, one to another. Yes. Yes. Right, 516, confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. and pray for one another. Mm -hmm. Hear that? It's a command, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. That yes. ye may be healed. Wow. The effectual, effectual fervent, fervent prayer, prayer of a righteous man, man availeth much. much. Wow. Amen. Wow. Mm. And I, I keep hearing one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to, to fly. Flight. The more of us are praying, is the even greater effect that it will yes. have as we are praying. Mm. Mm. Yeah, man, so yeah. Prayer. Awesome. I, I love awesome. that. I love that. Mm. I love that. That verse that you just mentioned, um, the, the Apostle James actually went on to use an example of someone who demonstrated that kind of prayer um, where, where uh, and he spoke about Elijah and he was mm -hmm. saying as one man Elijah prayed in that same chapter yes in that same chapter mm -hmm. James chapter 5 mm -hmm. it says Elijah prayed and um, he's a man of like passions as we are 
You know, so don't be intimidated. God can use you to pray one prayer that totally destroys the works wow. of darkness wow. in a whole nation. That's Come a on, scripture somebody. there. Elias yes. was a man subject to life, <laughs> like passions, passions or as emotions we are. as and we are. And he prayed earnestly that yes. it might not rain. Come on. And it rained not on the earth by yeah. the space of three, three and years. And a half oh years. God. Come on, somebody. How much more also of the Holy Spirit. Passion. Yes. Passion. Oh yeah. So sometimes, you know, Hallelujah. sometimes God wants some, some prayer with passion. Glory to God. You know, it's not just praying. <laughs> it's not just praying correctly. Yes. Sometimes that prayer needs to come with a certain kind of passion. Passion, yes. And that's why um, somebody saw a vision of prayers going up to heaven because they literally can be seen in the realm of the spirit, mm. piercing through the realm of the spirit. Awesome. And, and the prayers of mothers, <laughs> they said, were like, Jeez. they were like um, the I fastest was... rockets <laughs> piercing yes. through the the realm of the spirit because mm -hmm. a mother is very passionate yes. glory to god and elijah mm -hmm. got to that place of passion in god mm -hmm. jesus prayed until his sweat became drops as drops of blood yes. so we want to also say young people when god you know some people let me tell you something the spirit of god can stir you so much that you're wondering like will people think i'm crazy because <laughs> the passion that i'm feeling right now but that's what heaven needs yes. hallelujah when that is released on the earth we are able to release those things that heaven has reserved for this time in heaven. Yes. And, and, and sometimes we can get that in corporate prayer also. Mm -hmm. We realize, listen, the enemy has strategized and he has tried to, 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 to destroy the work mm -hmm. of God in an area, tried to diminish the influence of God, mm -hmm. and we're not going to have it. Amen. Hallelujah. And we say, we, yeah, man, yeah, yes. yeah. Glory mm -hmm. to God. We come to that place of resoluteness and mm -hmm. we say, no, God, they're not going to kill Peter. He just killed um, James, yeah, but he's not going to get Peter. Glory to God. And God delivered Peter that very night from the hand of Herod. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Andrew, um, in terms of the passion, it, it, you know, the passion for praying and so on, speak to those who are not saved. Because there's a question that came in. Does God hear the prayers of sinners? Answer right. that and then you can. So the, the short answer to that is no. That's the short answer. But there's also another side of God where God is merciful. Amen. Mm, right. During the four Gospels, nobody in, that, in those four Gospels were saved mm. like we know saved today. Nobody was born again until we see over there in Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. So did God hear the prayers of those persons before? That was what was presented in that time, those dispensations before. Yes. God heard the prayer of Abraham. He heard the prayer of Daniel. He heard different persons' prayer. Yes, and they weren't born again, but they were operating to the full measure of grace that God had released in that time mm -hmm. and season in their lives. So God knows what he has poured out in your heart. And, and, and um, God is merciful. I remember even as an unsaved child coming up, you know, we had needs, you know, we were a poor family coming up. I would cry out to the Lord because my father didn't have the money, my mother didn't have the money. You know, you look at your parents and you know their limitations. So we were taught to, to the, the scriptures and we went to Sunday school and stuff and we saw children and other people crying out to God. So in God's mercy, there are times when he will choose to answer. But in terms of a systematic, uh, a system of prayer, okay. there is no obligation that God has to hear the prayer of, of an unsaved person like praying about every, you know. Okay, so I have a party. Yeah. Yeah, have a <laughs> right. party. I'm a, I think you know yeah. a party where you know we may have lick and all them something. But I have the the, the, the the habit of asking somebody to pray to start it off, or yeah. you know those functions. Right. Um. Where where are those prayers, please? And sometimes people just pray, Oh Lord, I pray that God you save everybody in the world and touch all. Where does those prayer you know go? You know, God knows the measure of grace in people's hearts. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like I said, you know, that's the thing about God that mm -hmm. angers the devil. You know, God's merciful. Yes, Somebody will be yes. dressed um, very skimpily or whatever, doing all kind of stuff in a party. And then all of a sudden, a, a worship song start <laughs> playing. And then before you know it, that person who was probably filled with the Holy Ghost before and backslidden and left, left church or even Stop. not feel the Holy Ghost before, Born. just reconnect with God in that moment and, and realize repent. that I'm empty. Yeah. You know what? What am I doing here? I'm lost. Mm -hmm. You know, suppose God comes now and finds me in this situation. <laughs> you know, so, so God, God knows how to rescue people. And, um, you know, even in those little prayers there, um, they'll sometimes find somebody um, 
sometimes some righteous person is there for whatever reason they, maybe they are just passing through and they call upon that person to pray you know god is just he's yeah, just god he's yeah just god. He's, he's just god, god. and just we, god. we're not gonna tie the hand of yes. god you know god knows how to be merciful to whom he will be merciful Yes, yeah. I, I have a final, final, final question. This has been an awesome. Let's just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. God. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, I have one final question here, and it's about barriers. You know, there are some things, all the awesomeness of prayer that we've been talking about, but there are some barriers. I want, Kima, you can chime in on the last thing we commented on, and then you can... Um, answer this one give two or relate to this one give two things that would hinder strategic plan pastor Andrew, you do the same find two and you're gonna speak on those all right. barriers to prayer so just to, to strategic prayer sorry go ahead first of all unbelief mm -hmm. you know the lord says that if you're gonna come to him you must believe that he is and that yes. he's a reward of those who diligently seek, seek him, him. Mm -hmm. you know why are you going to bother praying when you're not expecting god to answer mm -hmm. you know that that can hinder us from really praying strategic prayers or hinder right. us from hinder the lord's you know answering us he'll not answer us if we are True. doubting that's mm -hmm. what the scriptures say we're doubting mm -hmm. you know if we're tossed to and fro he's not gonna be answering us yes right so unbelief in that wise and sometimes even as christians we're praying and the lord gives us an instruction mm -hmm. or gives us a revelation mm -hmm. and we don't believe what he has said and so we don't move to yes. even obey mm -hmm. what he has you know instructed us to do and so if the lord sees that okay if i say something to you and you're not gonna do it it doesn't make any sense i'm mm -hmm. not gonna speak to you mm -hmm. when you make up your mind to obey me then I can continually instruct you, yes. right? So, so it's unbelief. It's mm -hmm. not believing what God has said. Right. And another one is selfishness. When mm -hmm. we are caught up in our, our own world, we're not going to be about the ministry of reconciliation. We're going to be filled with the lust of the eyes, yes, the lust, lust of the, of the flesh, flesh, the pride of, of life, life, all these mm -hmm. things. We're not going to be thinking about, you know, the brother next door that needs to be saved or how can we intercede in somebody's life. We're not going to be praying according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. We're going to be praying things that are just natural and off the flesh. But the scripture says we are to keep our minds, our affections set on the heavenly things. Heavenly things. It's not right. the earthly things. Mm -hmm. So the prayers don't need to be focused there on God, give me the care, give me the house. And mm -hmm. no, remember we say what strategic prayers are according to the will of God. God. And it's primarily geared towards saving someone mm -hmm. or keeping them saved, keeping yes. them, you know, inside of Christ the for them to be God. preserved. Yes. Yeah. So your two your two hindrances are unbelief, unbelief and, and selfishness. Selfishness. Yes. And just quickly for young young people, you said unbelief, selfishness. Just in a quick um, recap, how do we overcome those hindrances? Unbelief and selfishness. Right. So first, we believe that God exists, right, mm -hmm. and that He will hear us mm -hmm. as we are praying, and know that He will answer mm -hmm. as we are praying according to His will. Right. And for us to be resolute that we're gonna obey whatever He says. Mm -hmm. If Him say pray this way or do this or you know our heart is there, we're gonna be keeping in step with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But that's one way. And as it pertains to selfishness, man, we just need to repent. Yes. We just need to repent. Mm -hmm. we, we should stop caring for these things and be so focused, sold out to kingdom yes. purposes, just as Jesus Christ was. Yes, and we have to take on the mind of Christ in mm -hmm. that way. And what, what kills selfishness is also when we realize the mandate of prayer, mm -hmm. the ministry of reconciliation. Right. We're here not just for ourselves, but right. to reconcile others to God. Yes. So we can't be, be selfish mm -hmm. and also carry out that ministry effectively, ministry right. of reconciliation. Right. Right, Pastor Andrew, your two hindrances yeah. and how to overcome them. I guess um, I hear the selfishness talk. And mm -hmm. um, selfishness to me can be translated as individualism, okay. where I cut myself off. I see myself as this, you know, great, big something, someone, mm -hmm. and I don't see myself as a part of a whole. And speaking to those who are already a part of the body of Christ, or yes. even if you're not a part of the body of Christ, you're a part mm -hmm. of the human race, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I may need your prayers because 
um, I, you know, I, my back may need to be scratched, <laughs> and mm -hmm. that, the back can't scratch itself. Yes, it needs the hand to stretch behind there and scratch the back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we are a body. So this is just awesome. Yes. Um, for me, uh, as it relates to hindrances, I, I I see how the Lord has been flowing with us this morning, mm -hmm. and you know we definitely need your prayers as saints of God. But but hindrance um, for me has to do with how we. We, we, we look at this whole thing of strategic prayer that, that listen, um, here is God trying to get us to fulfill his will in the earth. Yes. And then we are now um, magnifying maybe, you know, the love of money above, above um, the will of God. Yeah, that's one hindrance, yeah, materialism. Yeah. Materialism. Yes. We can't yeah. serve God and mama. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to serve God and money at the same mm -hmm. time. But, but God loves diligence though. He says he will hear us when we are diligent. Mm -hmm. And so watch God saying, listen, um, trust me to provide for your need. And, and one of the biggest things that, I, if you ask me, the first one that came to my mind really is lack of honesty. Mm -hmm. where, where, you know, but look at the honesty of this man that came to Jesus. He had his daughter needing to be healed. Yes. And he wasn't sure that his heart was, you know, his heart was all the way where it should be. So he's like, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. my unbelief. You see that kind of honesty? Mm -hmm. God can work with that. Amen. So dishonesty is, is one of the greatest things. You know, we acting like God don't know where our heart really is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are so used to hiding, you know, from people because of abuse. We have suffered um, people being insensitive to us. And so we develop this, 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 this um, mask that we wear to try and always look good, always try to impress people. And then when we get into prayer, we try to do the same thing with God. Yes. But, you know, we, we can't play that with God. Come on, guys, especially you guys out there. He, we are naked before him with whom we have to do. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm not just talking about naturally naked. Yeah, God sees you in the bathroom, yes. But he also sees what's going on inside in of heart. you. Yes. In your heart. Mm -hmm. He sees your thoughts. He sees where you what you really feel. I was listening to a man share yesterday about prayer. He said, listen, you can't be praying that you're going to trust God to get you over a hurdle. But in your heart, you're really so terrified and mm -hmm. fearful of that, that situation. This man was praying with this person who had cancer. And she was saying, you know, I believe. And she was making all the right confessions. Mm -hmm. But the Lord revealed to him that her heart was in a place of total mm -hmm. despair and fear. Mm -hmm. And when we despair, we are telling God that he's nowhere inside of our situation. My God. We're telling God that it's just us and the devil boxing it mm -hmm. out. And that's not real. Mm -hmm. God said, I will never leave you nor not forsake, forsake you. you. That's what Jesus says. Mm -hmm. And we just got to get back to what God says and just embrace what he says. Just as simple as that. He's there somewhere in the midst of this. Open my eyes, Lord, to see where you are in Amen. the midst of my, my mm -hmm. situation. Amen my circumstance this relationship open my eyes to see where you are so 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 when we get to this place of of independence where we try to work things out on our own you know we say we have to help ourselves you know um that's where we get messed up we can't do that we have to yes. understand that he's our help Amen. our help Amen. cometh from the lord which made heaven, heaven and earth and, and it's, really... it's nothing wrong to to get to a point where you realize mm -hmm. Because if you're doing a God thing, God's going to make sure that you, you, you feature him inside of the operations of that thing. Mm -hmm. We're not going to just perform ministry without God. Right. Come on, That's you're not going to raise that family, that child, without the help of God. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in there, we have to we have engage to God. Somewhere in there, we have to cry out to the mm -hmm. Lord for wisdom. Amen. Somewhere in there, we, we need the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you yes. so much, Pastor Amen. Andrew. We can go on and on with hindrances, mm -hmm. but just to highlight again, your two, um, yeah. be, not being so real, dishonest, being dishonest right? and materialism. Right. Materialism and, and, and also independence. Independence. Trying oh, to do pride. it without yes. God. Pride. And here are many coming up. Pride. <laughs> and Kimo, you had said earlier, what else? Selfishness. Selfishness. Unbelief. And unbelief and so many more. And... Uh, we could go on and on, but we have to end. We have to end this part of the discussion. And we continue on strategic prayer. This is only, we, we, this is our lifestyle. You know, we only can talk about it, bring out, bring out salient points, look at scriptures, but this is our lifestyle. 
we don't stop when when it comes to prayer as the scripture says we should be praying without ceasing and so i want to thank you so much for you know just staying here with us being a part of this awesome discussion on strategic yes. prayer good thing that it's in cyberspace it's on the internet you can go back rewind watch there's a question that um, probably you you heard but you never quite heard the answer to it so um so intent is you you can go back and watch and you can send this link to someone else so they can hear and hear the answers to these pertinent pertinent questions but before we actually end our time of fellowship and discussion here for today i want us to actually pray we're gonna be praying and um kimoy i want you to pray for our young people just whatever the lord puts on your heart you're gonna pray for our young people and i want pastor andrew you're gonna be praying for the body of christ you know but i want to lift up the nation the nation lord we thank you we thank you that you have created us we thank you god that you have placed us in different parts of the world but yes, we yes. thank we're thankful lord that in spite of where we are you are the central location for the sons yes, hallelujah we're seated in christ in god mm. and whether we're in japan jamaica england america we are centralized in you yes, but thank lord. you that we're in different countries we have different nationalities for a purpose mm -hmm. to carry out the ministry of reconciliation mm -hmm. to those in our territory mm -hmm. and our spheres of influence and so we thank you lord we pray for the peace of jerusalem you mandated us to pray on that yes, wise yes, we yes. see what's happening in that part of the world today mm -hmm. But we know that your plan supersedes every other plan. Yes. And what you have ordained, Lord, for your people, oh God, it will come to pass. And so, Lord, we pray for all the nations. Father, you said that every nation will come, every knee shall bow. Lord, we look forward to that time when every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. But today we pray that there will be hearts that submit from every nation, that submit yes. to you, yes. those you have mandated, Lord. Yes those you have ordained to bow their knees to you today in every nation right now and this is streamed out to so many different um areas of the world so many different parts of the world so many different um countries lord we pray that this message this discussion will touch a heart and somebody from america from england from wherever japan yes. china wherever jamaica barbados carlota country's Canada. name anywhere yeah. else anywhere zealand. everywhere new zealand so yeah. far in africa Australia. in all the continents father you will allow yes, somebody to hear this word and give Grenada. their hearts to you yes, yes lord so be glorified as pastor andrew mentioned about the flags being flown in that particular setting lord representing nations mm. You love nations, Father. Yes. You're the God of nations. And so we pray that the nations will bow to you. Yes. And Lord, exalt you as king. In Jesus' name. We're going to ask, you know, Kimoy to pray for the young people. And Pastor Andrew will do the final prayer for the body of Christ. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That there is a place for youths yes, inside Lord. of your kingdom, Lord. Yes, you yes. are calling them, yes. Lord God, and you are saying, you can be holy, you can yes, be righteous, yes, even inside yes, of this crooked and perverse generation. Yes, Jesus. I can make you a light, mm. Lord. So I pray that you draw youths, mm. Lord. Draw them and save them, them to Father. the utmost, Father. Please, Father. Hallelujah. You say you call upon them because they are strong. Yes. And if, they are if your word is in them, Father, yes, that makes them strong. And yes, I thank Jesus. you that as your yes, word Lord. is in yes, them, Lord. as the scripture says, if we Hallelujah. abide in your word and your word abide in us, Hallelujah. 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 we shall ask mm. mighty God, we shall pray your will, yes. and it yes. shall be done now because our hearts, as you, even as youths, We'll be desiring yes, godly Lord. things, mighty God, mm -hmm. and you will hear these prayers, and I will manifest mm -hmm. your kingdom, mm -hmm. mighty God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We'll be used by you, Father, yes, and Lord. we'll have this yes, rich Lord. fellowship with you, God. You, yes, Hallelujah. We'll be taught by you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, thank for your faithfulness you, even you, to you. use and what you're doing, Lord, even now, even now, Lord, many, Lord God, yes. hearts are being stirred heard father yes. to turn to you lord so many yes, youth are yes, seeking lord. truth lord yes, and lord. you will reveal yourself to them yes. hallelujah so yes. we thank you and we praise thank you in you advance lord. for how you will use thank youth you, jesus. mightily in jesus, jesus. name amen. Amen. amen yes father hallelujah. we thank you father thank for sending you. jesus hallelujah. to the earth hallelujah. as our as our prototype for the body of christ mm. 
Hallelujah, that he is indeed the desire of all nations. Yes, he is. How you delivered even England during the Second World War from Nazi Germany. As they cried out to you, they did not have the military might. Mm -hmm. But Lord, you taught that nation to, to cry out to you as a nation. Mm -hmm. And prayer saved England. Lord, we give you glory, mighty God, for the saints in England, for the church in England. Be glorified in that church. Yes, amen. In the name of amen. Jesus. Be glorified in, in, the, in your people, in all geographical nations. We thank you, Lord, that you have raised up a holy people, a righteous people called the church in each nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. People, mighty God, out of all nations. Indeed, Lord, you're fulfilling the word to Abraham that through thy seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Thy seed being Jesus Christ. We give you Thank praise you, for Father. that indeed you are giving Abraham sons, many sons, that as the stars of heaven, yea God, spiritual sons. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Those who are born hallelujah. of the Spirit. And so we thank you for the body of Christ right now, Lord. Everyone yes, that you have caused yes, to be to be baptized in Thank the Spirit you. of yes, God, Lord. that have formed your body. For you said, by one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Because mm -hmm. that somebody will understand the responsibility of that. Yes. I pray for the leaders and the body of Christ at this time. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, we thank, thank you for a convergence. Jesus. Hallelujah, of, of, of Hallelujah. leadership, of apostolic and prophetic leadership. Mm -hmm. Even in this nation of Jamaica, that yes, will speak Lord. to the earth. That will speak to what you're doing in the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Even as you raise up mighty God and make a distinction Hallelujah. between the goat and the sheep nations in the mm -hmm. season. In the season as the anti-Christian system increases around the world, mighty God. We thank you that you will have sheep nations mm -hmm. that you will bring with you into that thousand year reign with Christ as he returns to the earth yes, on Lord. planet earth as his feet hallelujah. hits the earth and say I'm coming now hallelujah. to rule and reign on the throne of my father thank David. You, father father you, we Jesus. thank you for you, the church that you are training right now to reign with you hallelujah in the earth for this thousand years we thank you father God that Lord somebody will hear this today mm -hmm. and say I can't miss this yes, I thought Lord, that yes. what I had was so good yes, but Lord. this is the best <laughs> deal that I've ever thank heard you, in Lord. the history of my Lord. life Jesus. there's no offer greater than to hallelujah. become a son of God yes, to rule and reign with yes, Christ Lord. to be a joint here with Jesus yes, hallelujah yes, to be a hearer of God yes, hallelujah yes. Yes, Lord. And so we thank you for the body of Christ right thank now. We know you have a limited God. amount thank of you. persons that you will you will make a part of your body, that you will make a part of your house, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes. And so, Lord, we thank you for this great end time harvest mm. that you are releasing right now, that you are that that we are in right now of, of you reaping souls. And so we thank you for the church, mighty God, mm. being sharpened and being, being, being sharpened apostolically and prophetically mm. to be a sharp threshing instrument in yes, the earth Father. to reap, O oh God, the last great harvest of souls. Mm. And Lord God, to establish your will in the nation of Israel. Mm. O oh God, to raise up that 144,000 Jewish young men Hebrew young men, in the name of Jesus, that will be a thorn in the flesh of the Antichrist mm -hmm. to cause the two witnesses to arise in the earth. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the last great harvest mm -hmm. that you will reap, Father God, to fill your house. Because you said, you, Father, you want your house to be full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, mighty God, that we have the opportunity to be a part of that yes, even Lord. now. So we give you praise for those that you will send to the nations who will know that yes, they're not coming back. Yes. But Lord, we're going to exit through those nations into glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And when you come back in, in the clouds, we will receive our immortal bodies. Thank like you, you have your immortal body, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you are a conquering Savior. Hallelujah. You have conquered hell, death, and the grave. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus gives us the victory again and again. And so we say, bless us, mighty God. Cause some church leaders, some pastors to say, I'm getting out of the mess that I've been in. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm not going to mislead the sheep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for delivering the saints of God out of the hands and the mouth Hallelujah. of those who have become Thank wolves. You. Those who can't wait on you to provide. Those who decide that I'm not going to wait. I'm going to take what is mine now. Thank Hallelujah. You. And they have begun to pray on the sheep. But deliver the, 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 the sheep from the mouth of the wolves mm. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that has arisen up even in the body of Christ. Mm. Those that have become wolves because they have refused to wait on the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. And have decided that they are going to get what they want now and miss out you, on Jesus. that eternal imperishable reward. Have mercy, God. Mm. Be glorified. Help us to wait 
He said, you're going to try the patience of the saints through the anti-Christian system. The patience of the saints is about to be tried. Oh God, to see whether or not we're going to wait on you to give us those imperishable rewards. Those rewards that are eternal that man can't give us. Hallelujah. But Lord, we say, help us to wait until our change comes. Yes. We glorify your Father and we give you praise for all that you're doing. Amen. And we say, whatever we fail to ask, don't fail to grant it. As we be believe you, Lord, that even many here in this broadcast will give their life to you. Yes, Save somebody, Lord. Amen. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Heal some sick yes, body. Lord. Rebuke sicknesses and disease. Every form of sickness and disease. We take authority over it now. In the name of Jesus, we bind spirits of infirmities and we cast them out. Amen. In Jesus' name, from your bodies right now, in the name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' name Amen. and be made whole by the power and the presence of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you so much. We just want to give God thanks for this. this. Just put your hands together again. Hallelujah. And I want to just leave three words with you. And I want you to look at these words. You know, look at them. This is what God has mandated us to do. Pray without ceasing. This is 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Let's say that together. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Let's go.